you know, I've never climbed a mountain. But one of the things that I do understand about climbing a mountain is that everything cannot go. And so most of the time when you see someone who has successfully climbed a mountain, when you see their image or you see their picture somewhere, you don't really see them with a whole lot of things. Maybe when they first started that journey of climbing the mountain, they had a lot of different things with them. You know, they had the the fanny pack, they had the water bottle, they may have even had a mountain bike, they had the book bag. But when you see that image of them successfully making it to the top, you, a lot of times, Pictures where I've seen, you just see the person and you may see like a little small bag, but you don't see everything that they started with. And what I understood is in order to climb a mountain, it does take stamina because you have to understand that you're going higher, you're elevating. And so that's going to apply pressure in different areas. That's going to allow your body to be put in a state of shock to where it has to now work faster. It has to now work harder. You're going to be going into new dimensions of air. The air level changes to where now it takes for you to have to learn some techniques. It takes for you to have to master, you know, your body weight and what can go and what cannot go on there. You want to bring everything to the top. When you take your selfie, when you take your picture, you want it to be said that you made it with everything, but everything can't go. And so you may have to get rid of your mountain bike. You may have to get rid of your extra bag. You may have to get rid of that extra water bottle. But the point, the, the overall point is that you want to make it up there. You want to make it up there. And what I want to make mention is when a person is going up a mountain, it's very critical and very vital that they eliminate all kinds of distractions. That's, that's important. That's important that when I'm going up that I am not distracted with what's going on on the side of me. I am not distracted with what's going on underneath me because the moment we begin to lose sight and lose focus off of Jesus Christ and off of the mission, that slows us down. Think about that for a moment. Whenever we allow offenses to come in, whenever we allow circumstances to move us and to shake us, whenever we allow complaining to to take place and unbelief and doubt, we kind of set ourselves back. Yeah, you should be at this point in the mountain, but because you've allowed discouragement to settle in, there's like a, a, a standstill. You're in neutral. You're not really going up the mountain, but you're not going down either. You're just there and you're, you're, what's the word? You're going in your mind about, man, can this really be done? Can I do this? Can I do this? I've already come so far, but it's getting harder. It's getting harder. My bones are starting to hurt. You know, different parts of my body are starting to do funny things that I did not know they can do. And that's because it really does take stamina and it takes endurance to be able to successfully get to the top of this mountain. That's not easy. That's not easy. That takes consistent movement of your body and a fight. I thought about Peter who he asked Jesus, Lord, if it is you walking on the water, tell me to come to you. Tell me to come to you. Now, that took faith. So going up the mountain, that takes faith, number one, knowing and believing that something good is going to come out of this. And I, I believe that most people get that same thing out of wanting to even climb a mountain. Something is going to come out of this. Something good. Something that said that I prevailed. Something that said that I persevered. Something that said that I overcame. That's going to come out of this. And so it took faith for Peter to even ask Jesus to tell me to come out to you on the water. And so Jesus said, come. And so Peter, he gets out of the boat. He gets out of the boat. So the fact that he walked on water, it showed that the Lord was calling him forward. Peter got called forward. Not everybody got out of the boat. Not everybody got that invitation to walk with Jesus on the water, but Peter did. And so as he's walking on the water, he's, he's doing it. He's getting to Jesus, but then he began to lose sight of Jesus. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Why? Because a distraction came in. 
What distracted him? The fact that there was a real storm going, a real storm going on around him. The fact that there were real winds blowing on his left and on his right. The fact that, you know, there was real turbulence. This was a real storm. There were a lot of different things happening around Peter and he took his eyes off of Jesus and he immediately began to sink. We see that when we take our eyes, when we lose sight and vision of the target of the focus then we will lose ground we will drown we will fall into a hole we will stumble we will stumble you know we will we will we will miss out on promotion you will miss out on promotion and that's not to say that peter did not get promoted but in that moment you can only imagine what the Lord had for Peter had. He kept his eyes stayed on the Lord. You don't, we don't even know what was going to come out of that. We don't know what Peter was about to get. And I'm not, you know, that's not to say that he didn't get anything for getting out the boat because, you know, that story right now is still being told to this day. And so, yes, Peter, he gets some cool points for that because not everybody is, is is bold enough to actually get out of the boat and walk on water because that's unnatural. That's on you know unheard of. Who who walks on water? That's impossible. And so it's it's not like he didn't get any cool cool points. You know, Peter got some cool points, and you know he is forever known for being the one to walk on water with Jesus. But he also missed out on what was available for him, what was already his, what was there for him. The fact that you had faith to ask that question. There are things that are yours and that you could have, but you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus because this life that we are journeying through, it's going to get hard sometimes. It's going to get hard. And it seems like the higher we go and the further we go in our walk, that it does get harder. And that's because the Lord is working patience. He's exercising our faith. He's trying to teach us how to endure. He's trying to teach us how to persevere. We need that tenacity. We need that tenacity. We need to fully grip what what Jesus is handing out to us. He's he's extending his his what 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 is what is it called? His his scepter. He's extending that. And if we are sober enough to see what he is doing, that he's extending his hand, that he's extending his scepter, then then we can make it up this mountain because he knows that it's hard. He knows that as people in a sinful body that we get physically tight. He knows. He knows. But if we are sober, if we are sober, then we can we can know when it is time to continue forward, when it's time to go higher. We can know. But if I am drunk with the things of this world, if I am filled with complaining, if I am filled with unbelief, if I am filled with just different things that's going to get in the way of my forward movement, then I'm not going to be where I need to be when I need to be, if that makes sense. Yeah. Sometimes we don't understand that when we lost sight of, of Jesus, that the ground that we lost set us back. We don't see that, man, I should be at this level, but I'm at this level because I lost some ground. And the good thing is that we can always go back and gain that ground back, but we have to be sober enough to know the season that we are in. We have to be sober enough to know when it's time to shift. We have to be sober enough to know when it's time to move with haste and when it's time to move forward. Yeah, it's time for you to let some things go. It's time for you to now be at this level in your walk and in your faith. Yeah, you need sobriety so that you can see clearly because... When we are, are full of the things of this life, when we are full of pride and when we are full of stubbornness, when we are full of fear, when we are full of just drunkenness, the vanity of this world, the wanting to know what's happening in the world and keeping up with the trend and just 
doing worldly things, being carnal, being two ways, being double minded. When we are full of all of these corruptible things, then what happens is it clouds our vision. It clouds our vision. And then you miss the fact that there was a, I don't know what they call it in the mountains, but you miss the fact that there was a whole little stepping stool sticking out of the mountain off of them out, out of the mountain you missed the fact that there was like a, a a a part for you to reach next sticking out of the mountain that you missed because your vision was cloudy you you know you allowed discouragement to settle in and now you're losing ground and the enemy knows the he knows the level of strength that you have the enemy knows that you have strength. The enemy knows that, man, if this person keeps their eyes on Jesus, if this person really finds out who they are, then they will make it up this mountain. He already knows. And so he will cause distractions. Just like that storm when Peter was walking on water, that distraction came. And it's not to say that the distractions are not going to come. They're going to come. But you get to decide where you're going to set your eyes. Are you going to set your eyes to the things around you? Or are you going to set your eyes on the one on the one who's calling you up this mountain and the one who's guiding you, his voice guides you up this mountain. He tells you not to take that rock that's sticking out of the mountain. He tells you to take that rock that is sticking out of the mountain. He tells you to let that thing go so you can come up high. Hey, this is going to weigh you down. Let that go. He is the one that's going to guide you, but you have to stay sober. That means with your ears and with your eyes. Because when a person is drunk, it's not just their eyes that messes with them, but it's their ears too. This is why they can begin to hear things that, that were not there and see things that were not there. Yeah, I know what it's like to be drunk in the spirit and it doesn't feel good. Your your state of mind is really altered. It's changed. It's, it's different and you, you don't have any self-control. That's one of the, the things about being sober is having a level of self-control. You are in control of what you give your ears and your eyes to, you are in control. Either you can choose to be sober to the voice of God, or you can choose choose to be drunken with discouragement and with despair and with hopelessness and feeling like I failed. God, I delayed myself. You know, I should be at this point in the mountain, but I'm still here. That doesn't mean that you just let go of yourself and you stay there. No, you have to persevere. You have to have the stamina. That's why everybody cannot climb a mountain. A physical mountain, you know, a lot of people want to be successful in climbing Mount Everest. If you don't know what Mount Everest is, Mount Everest is one of the tallest mountains in the world. And so you have a lot of people who they plan for months and for years to take an attempt to actually climb Mount Everest. Why is that so hard? Why is climbing this one particular mountain so hard? And why is it something great when, when many people achieve actually climbing this mountain? Well, because this mountain isn't an easy one to climb. If it was that easy, then... Everybody would go to wherever Mount Everest is. I forget, I think in Washington. They would go to where Mount Everest is and they would climb it. But it's not that easy. No, when you show up, you have to decide, okay, what is going up this mountain? You have to decide which way am I going to take. You have to actually have a game plan. You have to make sure that your breathing is good. You have to make sure that you worked out. You have to make sure that you exercise your muscle because... It'll be it'll be messed up for you to you start climbing this mountain and like halfway through you get a Charlie horse, you know? That's when that's when your your muscles in 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 parts of your body gets tightened. It gets tightened and it stiffens up and it's very painful if you don't know what a Charlie horse is. You can't afford to have that while you're trying to climb up this mountain. You can't afford for your bones to be acting up and for your fingers to start cramping. No, you have to have stamina. And so that does take skill. That takes skill for someone to climb up a mountain. But with us, with the sons of God, we have Jesus as our coach. And if we listen in real carefully, he is already giving us the instructions on what we need. We just have to put forth the effort because some days we don't want to climb. Some days it's harder than others. Yesterday, I made it this far up the mountain, but, to, but today it's just hard and I'm tired. And we need the stamina. We really need the Lord to give us the strength and the endurance and the tenacity to make it up this mountain because it's it's real. And sometimes you can feel the soreness in your body. You can feel the, the wearing and the tearing in your body from yesterday's, you know, journey up, up the part of the mountain. You can feel it, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. I'm telling you, you know, having the stamina and 
the endurance, it's that's essential. That's essential for you to to make it successfully into eternal life. That's why Jesus can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah, this person actually worked really hard. This person actually fought their way through. This person was not going to take no for an answer or, you know, no for an answer. This person was not going to accept failure. You have a lot of people that start to climb Mount Everest and they turn back because it just got too hard. You know, other people are passing them, but then they look at themselves, not from the right lenses, but they look at themselves comparing themselves, you know, from the wrong lenses. And we do that sometimes in our walk. We begin to compare ourselves and God does not want us to do that. When you start comparing yourself, that means you, you've you now taken your eyes off of who Jesus says that you are. When you begin to look to your left and your right and you see that person and they're walking, you say, man, I want what they have. I, I wish I could be like them. I wish I had those talents and I wish I had those, you know, I had those gifts. And the Lord is like, but I put special things on the inside of you. I put things on the inside of you that that person doesn't have. So you can't get distracted and worry about what the other person is doing. You have to focus on you because it's your life. It's your life. It's your testimony. You have to stand before God. You have to decide whether or not it's worth climbing this mountain because everybody else may not agree that it's even worth it. Man, you're about to climb Mount Everest. Okay, let me know if you make it to the top. Send me a selfie down because I could never, I could never risk my life climbing up a mountain. Man, that's too risky. Do you realize that you can lose your life? And that's the thing. That's the thing. Living our lives for Jesus Christ, that's a daily risk every single day. Every single day. Because Jesus tells you the things that's going to happen when you follow after him. He says that they, 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 they're going to hate you. But he says, don't let it discourage you because they hated me first. Yeah, they're going to persecute you. They're going to do all kinds of things to you. They're going to say all types of things, all manners of, of evil things against you. But don't let that discourage you. Others may not see the worth in climbing up this mountain and taking this journey of faith. But you, you see something in climbing this mountain. You see something in Mount Everest that other people can't see. They don't have the vision that you have. They don't have the insight that you have. They don't have the eyes that you have. That's why you got to keep it on Jesus. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus because he's giving you the vision and you have to stay sober. What happens when we, when we allow the distractions of this life to cause us to lose ground and to cause us to lose our footing? You become unstable. You become unstable. Yeah. You could be at this level in your walk and on this mountain, but you allow discouragement to, to discouragement to settle in because you had to let go of some people or because you had to pass some people. Sometimes when you're climbing up a mountain, you have to pass some people. That person may be moving too slow or everyone is moving at their own rate, but you have to not allow different things to discourage you. Man, that person just fell off. What happens when the people that you are going up the mountain with decides to quit? That can't discourage you. You have to keep going in spite of, even if you make it by yourself, even if you finish by yourself, you can not allow that to discourage you, the fact that you made it by yourself. Listen, everybody can't go with you up the mountain and everything can't go with you. Man, I really don't want to let go of this mountain bike, but I have to go. And that can't discourage me because it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. The higher I go, everything cannot come. You may even have to take off some layers. I don't know what you started with. I don't know what you thought in your mind. I don't know. It's funny because when we transitioned from South Florida to Georgia, in my mind, I just knew everything was coming with me, especially because I had just moved into my, my brand new apartment. And I had a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff that I had was brand new. And so in my mind, I underestimated <laughs> what all I had. And so to make the long story short, when it was time to go up higher, when it was time to go and the, and the clock was ticking and I had no more time, unfortunately, I had to let go of some things. And so at some point, all that I did have that would no longer fit, I had to actually start giving that stuff away to neighbors. Like that's how, that's how serious it got. Like, wait a minute, I actually have to give this stuff away. I can't bring it. Listen, there's no more room. If you want to come up higher, then you must and you have to be willing to let some things go. That's not always fun, but it's worth it. It's worth it to know that me, you know, removing this 
this excessive weight is going to be good for me. You're going to be able to breathe better because if you have, think about it. If you're climbing up this mountain and you, and you have all of this baggage, all of this extra stuff, that's going to weigh on you. That's going to slow your breathing down and you are going to get tired. You're going to get tired. And you know how it is when our physical bodies get tired. You know, we, we want to... I don't know how you are when you're tired, but when I'm tired, I don't want to do anything else but lay down and rest my body. I don't want to do anything else. Sometimes I don't even want to eat at night when I'm tired because I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And so imagine you trying to climb up this mountain with all this excessive stuff and it's slowing down your breathing. You're going to make some decisions. Either you're going to just go back down, you're going to quit, or you're going to begin to decide to let some things go because you understand that everything can't go. I have to go higher. And so God is calling us higher, but we are in a season of warfare. We are in a season of a daily battle. Climbing up the mountain is a daily battle to where every single day when those thoughts enter your mind, when distractions try to present themselves, when your flesh and your body starts to work against you, you get to decide what you're going to do. You get to decide, what am I going to do when these thoughts rise up and tell you that you can't do it, that it's impossible, that you failed yesterday, you failed already. How many times are you going to fail before you just give up? How many times are you going to fail before you realize that this can't be done? The devil works like that too. He wants you to feel as though that God is not helping you up this mountain. He wants you to feel like life is so hard. He wants you to feel like it can't be done. You see, you fell yesterday. You see, you slipped up. Yeah, look at you. Look look at you. You're not built for this. You're not, you're not fit for this. You're not cut out for this. But God gives me strength. Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. God gives me strength. If I fall on the rock, then... I will be broken. I will be broken. I will have. I will get everything that I need if I fall on the rock. If I lean on the Lord, on the Lord's understanding and not my own, that He will direct my path. I'll be able. I'll be sober enough to hear the Lord's instructions on how to overcome this day, on how to endure until the next day. Yeah, He tells me what I need to do. He tells me the decisions that I need to make, but I need to be able to hear Him clearly. So that means I need to be in position. I need to be in position. I must remain sober. Yet yeah, when discouragement wants to knock at your door in isolation and, you know, those thoughts that tell you, you know, you should just stay home. Don't go to church today. Don't read your Bible today. Don't, don't pray today. Don't, don't text that person today. Don't, don't let that person know what's going on in your life. Just be to yourself. You can, you can see God at home. You know, you can read your own Bible by yourself. You can, you can have church at home by yourself. I know these things because I have my share of Dealing with those thoughts that will make me feel like just be by yourself. Yeah, the devil wants to get you to yourself. He wants you to get you. He wants to get you off to yourself. He wants you to not hear the voice of God. He wants you to lose ground so that he slows you down. If he can slow you down enough and take your eyes off of Jesus, then he can get you out of the race. He can get you out of the race. But we have to know how to silence the enemy and how to shut him up and how to let him know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That's what Philippians 4.13 says. No, I don't know about you, Satan, but I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is my strength. And although I am tired today and I was tired yesterday, I'm going to put forth the effort tomorrow. I'm going to fight until tomorrow. I'm going to push myself into tomorrow. I'm going to strive. I'm going to press. I'm determined. I'm eager because I know that great is my reward in heaven. My reward is great. And the way that I am feeling now, I'm not going to feel tomorrow. The way I'm feeling right now, I am not going to feel tomorrow. Why? Because he's going to give me strength because I asked for it. He's going to give me what I need. Although I've let go of some things, that doesn't mean that I'm empty handed. No, I have everything that I need. I have my coach. I have my stamina. I have my strength. I have my breath. I have the joy of the Lord. And that's all I need to make it up this mountain. That's all I need. And I have an open heart and I'm not drunk. I'm sober. I can see my vision is not cloudy. So I have everything that I need to make it up this mountain. And so stamina and endurance is essential. You need it. You need it. You need sobriety. That's, that's the key. That's the key to your forward movement. You need that. You need to keep an open mind. Yeah, things are going to happen. The world is messed up. Things are always not going to go your way. But you have to keep an open mind. You have to keep your mind surrounded and emerged in the word of God. You have to. You need to be full of the new wine, the word of God. You need to be full of that wine, not drunken with the world. You know, you need to be full of the word of God and the glory of God so that he can give you what you need in order for you to be successful up this mountain. 
And so may the spirit of the living God, may he give you the ears to hear and the eyes to see in Jesus name.